So, okay, so uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Patrick Fitzgerald, CEO of Required Magic. Um, we do a, a whole bunch of different things, uh, consulting, uh, write software that sometimes doesn't work like uh, we were all, all experienced on, the, um, Thurs on Thursday. Um, I'm here to talk about Firebird, not necessarily its integration with, with LibreOffice, which is a great thing, um, but my experience with it, and I guess I was very surprised when I discovered it had been integrated. Um, so let's just step through that. So, I mean, really, what's a database? That's going to be the first thing we'll talk about um, and why it's also great. Uh, what, what's in the base in the first place and where did Firebird come from? They're all related. Um, and what's good about it? Um, well, it's not, it's not access. Um, and I'll just step you through our use case and why I'm a fan of this particular database. Um, uh, and we'll yeah, race through that. Um, any questions, feel free to ask at any point, and I'll try and get to them at the end. Um, there's only 15 slides. So uh, in my experience, I zip through presentations. Um, so what's a database? It, uh, it, uh, well, it's not a big spreadsheet, although it kind of is. Um, but if someone knows the definition of it, please tell the UK government, because uh, that was a massive news item uh, over over here in, in the UK, um, where they had some automated process that was injecting millions of records, not thousands, or what, let's just say hundreds of thousands of records, and somehow it, you know, they thought that the, the ultimate target for this was going to be a spreadsheet, and, uh, and well, Excel ran out of capacity, according to the contractors that built the system. Um, and yeah, so there are other ways to do things rather than spreadsheets, especially Excel spreadsheets. Um, so what's Interbase? Interbase is something that I came across in the late 90s. Yes, I'm that old. In fact, I'm even older than that. Um, uh, I had a, uh, a project that was working, uh, we're, we're building a job tracking system. Um, I was a fan of, uh, of Pascal and Object Pascal at that point. So we bought the Borland uh, Delphi Studio Enterprise, which luckily came with this thing called a SQL database, which I had heard of. Back those back in those days, um, Microsoft uh, SQL was just uh, was just starting out having having them ha with Microsoft having uh, worked with Sybase um, and Sybase started around the same time as as Interbase Corporation started um, but uh, Sybase started with millions of, of dollars worth of venture, cap venture capital uh, whereas uh, Interbase was started as a as a yeah, ga garage startup so what did this little database actually do? Um, it was incredibly advanced for its time. It had uh, its multi-architecture. It ran on just about anything at that time. Um, all written in C. Um, it had uh, API ticket uh, triggers. It had um, stored procedures. You could call external code, so you could you could have things that would write uh, stuff directly to the file system if you wanted to. Um, and of course, you know, as I said, it was free. It came free for with the Delphi Enterprise, so we had a license for it. So why not started using it? Um, and it's it's got a long history. It's the development started of, of this particular product started in 1984, um, and you know, it's got some interesting interesting facts uh, associated with it. Um, now apparently, it was designed as a targeting computer for the for the M1 tank, um, which now physicists in the audience, please correct me, but uh, it was built into into the tank because of the targeting system uh, would would reset every time the gun was fired, and they had to come back up 
online immediately or as, as, as rapidly as possible and without any database corruption. Now, some people have speculated it was to keep, to keep track of the number of rounds fired by the gun, but I think it was actually more, more sophisticated than that. It would have been some, something such as uh, some sort of radar readout or something for target sensing. Um, and apparently the gun would be fired and it would, I would imagine it was just shock. The, the, the vibration would probably reset the computer. Um, but I've also been told there's an EMP pulse, an electromagnetic pulse, uh, that would just basically reset the computer every time the, the gun was fired because it obviously was adi wasn't adequately shielded. Not sure if, that, about, if that's true, but that's what I've been told. So it was built to be highly reliable, um, which is the key takeaway. Um, it's compact, so the database will fit in a single file. Um, it's accessed via a connection string um, by the client, by the client that's accessing it. Um, the binary sits in in three meg, or <clears throat> back in those days, sat in, in three meg of RAM and three meg of uh, disk uh, disk space as well. So the entire installation is extremely compact, and and it builds databases that are highly resilient to power outages, um, any kind of failure of of the infrastructure it's almost guaranteed that the, the database will be intact. Um, and that's more than I think could be said for a whole lot of other databases that I've used. Um, not naming any names, but I think probably a lot of us have gone through uh, database recoveries uh, with uh, varying degrees of joy, shock, horror, and uh, tears. Uh, but uh, this particular database, we've never had any problems with it. So what's, uh, what's Firebird then? If that's interbase, what's Firebird? Well, there's a big, there's a big, uh, a, a, long, a long history, a little bit um, like Sousa actually, in terms of the different ownerships of the company. Um, and around, uh, at some point in the, in the late 90s, interbase was acquired by Ashton Tate, and then that Ashton Tate was, acquired by Borland and then Borland decided that they were going to spin the interface um, arm of the business out into a different company, take it public, uh, open source it, you know, do all the trendy things that, that Linux was just beginning to make possible, uh, popular in terms of the investment community. Um, but in year 2000, um, the, the bubble burst. Uh, the, the venture capital funding collapsed, uh, IPOs uh, into, um, of public offerings of companies collapsed. It was a big problem. Um, that's partially because uh, mixed, mixed up with the, with the build up to year 2000 and possibly what might have happened with, with bringing in lots and lots of consulting dollars. Um, <clears throat> the, the whole internet had been, as everyone thought, had been overhyped. Um, and a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, companies have been raised and, and had burst and a lot of companies went down at, at that point, <clears throat> but for a little while, a, a, for a little while, at least the, the interbase source code was open to, uh, on, on a repo. And so a bunch of developers, including the lead developers resigned from Borland. Uh, and resigned from internet uh, interbase software corporation as it was about to be was as was named um and basically took all the the brains of the business uh, away uh and at the same time they they took a copy of the open open licensed software you know the, the source code um and they announced the the uh, birth of a new company called Inter uh, Firebird, a new uh, a new uh, project called Firebird in the sequel. Um, and at that point, Interbase went back to closed source. You can still buy Interbase there. It's a completely different product now. Um, but Firebird, Firebird was born from that point. Um, it, it was just a small window where the source became available. The authors left and created something else new um, and uh, and they released uh, about six months later, uh, version one of Firebird 
And at that point, it supported Linux, Win Windows, Solaris, and HP UX. Um, so why is it so good? What's it, what's it really good about it? Well, it's very good about it with embedded systems. Um, if you look at the repos on uh, just about any flavor of Raspberry Pi uh, build, you'll, you'll see it's, it's there. Um, but it could, it could potentially fit in smaller architectures than that. Um, I, I guess it could be, it could be built. Um, but really now the, the, the smallest possible co compute size, uh, realistically, uh, where you can run uh, Linux fully is the Raspberry Pi. Um, I could be wrong there. Um, if you need, if you need a, a software that that maybe uh, you are delivering to a customer or to a to a device or as an architecture that you need a maintenance free data store, you just need to keep your data in there. Then that's that the Firebird is a perfect choice for it. Um, it's uh, SQLite is good, but I would say that uh, given that it's it, it's not really it's designed as a as a single user data store or database. Whereas uh, Firebird is from the very very ground up is uh, multi user, and can allows concurrent access. Uh, good for data collection, unattended systems, uh, any other multi user system where a bigger database, Postgres, MySQL, others, Oracle, whatever, uh, Microsoft, uh, overkill, and you just don't want to a put the licenses license, licensing dollars into it or the uh, the maintenance into it um, so something like a, a a kiosk a web kiosk would be perfect um, and of course it's very good at not being Microsoft access um, which was something that we considered in the uh, uh, once um, and I know other people have and um, re regretted it so so our use case um, Back in the late 90s, uh, had a company called Ocean Web Digital, and we had a drop. We were thinking of a way to track the work we're doing for a number of customers. Um, we were doing the uh, a lot of work with um, with a variety of customers in fractions of of a day. So we'd be working with a, with a lot of small business and as as their outsourced IT department. Um, so. I said about designing this system, um, thought from the outset that it should be a, a CGI um, server that would deliver HTML to the to the, wherever people were logged on. So the customer, so if an engineer was at a customer site, we could build something, we could uh, we could bill it uh, then and there, and custom and the uh, engineers could write notes into the job, into the work request or WR as we call them, um, and everything would keep would, would be uh, the, the time taken to do the work would be would be uh, tracked and plus a, a desktop uh, Windows app I should say uh, for accounts that injects invoices into sage accounts at the month end um, so that that in that case it uh, automated the billing process so all, all the accountants uh, all the bookkeeper had to just press a button and uh, invoices would just be spat out by by Sage, but from ninety. So it lasted for about ten years, but it's beginning to need a refresh. We need to put more in it, and really um, looking at that kind of level of code, uh, which is not, not lines of codes, but each one of those little icons has uh, probably several, you know, hundreds of or you know, dozens of lines of code in it. Um, it became a bit of a nightmare, so. Complexity had taken over as so just a fraction of the RD chart. Um, so we came up with a solution uh, called, which we found in Django. And I'm not sure if anyone there has had experience with Django. Uh, it's a fantastic um, a web web front end uh, back end uh, combination framework. Uh, and they had this little command called inspect DB. And what inspect DB would do is it would you pointed at a database if you've got the the driver for it um, and Python uh, some guys had just developed the Python Firebird driver 
which wanted be which was integrated with Django. So I thought, let's take a look at this. Inspect DB looks into a database and creates all the Django um, models.py files, uh, which uh, for those that don't know Django, the models files are the the exact uh, field descriptions of every field and every table in an existing database. Um, so we that that gave us the picture or that we could work from as to what we needed to do to recreate what we needed what we needed to recreate for the uh, to to modernize the the system. Um, but the best thing was we didn't need to migrate data into a new database. We could just leave as is and upgrade it, and it's still running. It's running uh, version three uh, five that at the moment. Um, we can just migrate the client side um, or the web side uh, and keep the Windows accounting application untouched. So that's still there. It's been seen an update for a very, very long time, uh, like I'm talking a decade. Um, and yeah, there's no migration, um, no new database uh, infrastructure to build, nothing. Um, and the result was something we called Wave Suite, um, which was this is about ten years old. Uh, this uh, UI, I think, or, um, but uh, you know it, it's still functional, still works, it's still uh, billing customers, um, and it's all you know, it, it, it works a treat, and it's easily accessible, and all the work you need to do is now in a in a Python framework that is modernized. Um, so I'm coming to the close, close to the end of uh, my time slot. In fact, I've just gone past it. Um, so that's my experience with it. Um, I think Fiverr and integration with LibreOffice is, is a good thing. I, if anyone has out there has got uh, the, the, uh, you know, the, the knowledge behind how it came to be in LibreOffice, I don't know that. I, I haven't really looked into it, um, but it's a good thing. And it's already, if you're running LibreOffice, it's already on your machine. So you've already got a high performance database server sitting on your, on your machine. Um, so if you're a developer, if you're a, a, a project, uh, project manager or you know, anyone that's, uh, that is, that's uh, used to dealing with uh, client problems, you know, you've already got a high performance database server on your machine and it's actively being developed, and it's um, it's good for all the reasons I've, I've outlined. Uh, yeah. Patrick, you actually have thirty minutes, so you don't need to rush. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought I was fifteen. No, you're good. Well, I've got fifteen minutes for questions, <laughs> or I could do it all again a lot more slowly. If there's any questions, feel free to ask. So, so that you had mentioned that the M1 um, tank, yeah, tank, um, and so so basically that that it's to reset or well each right. round that goes out. Yeah. Well, no. Well, that, yeah. Exactly. Well, now I don't know the the I don't think anyone really knows the history. Um, uh, there, there are room. There was, they were uh, awarded a, a three and a half million dollar um, Department of Defense contract. Um, there were rumors that it's, it was not designed to monitoring cleaning systems or something like that. Um, it was. <clears throat> there are rumors that it was actually to do with a development of a of a targeting computer for the M1 tank. Um, whether or not that's True, I don't think you know, anyone's going to be able to disclose that with any level of truth because of all the all the, you know, security yeah, metrics, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. But um, so apparently now I don't know, this is why I'm, you know, any physicist can let me know that uh, an, e an EMP pulse is something usually usually uh, associated with nuclear weapons. 
Now, I know that they were, I know the US military had things such as nuclear tipped rounds that, you know, in a, in a battlefield situation like you know, a nuclear war, then they could, they could use them with low yield. And maybe it was that, maybe it was for that. I don't know. But the, what, the, what I heard is that every, every uh, round would, would reset the computer. But if it's an EMP pulse, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. For some reason, it'll reset the computer. Um, and that, made it, that meant it had to be highly reliable. And, I, and a lot of the things that are already built into, into Interbase um, are the things that, people, that other, other databases uh, started adding uh, much later in their life life's span so um you know it's not it's not it's definitely not the solution for everything but you know as an in embedded database it is fantastic mm, sounds interesting i wouldn't i would probably rule out the emp for sure because you have different yeah and that 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 wouldn't make sense i mean in yeah. my view so yeah well it could be that there's some sort of um there's some i, I don't know and there might be some sort of uh, electronic, electromagnetic uh, wave that happens from firing a, a large caliber gun that only with the advent of computers inside tanks was ever noticed. And of course, com computers inside tanks would have been a fairly recent uh, uh, use case, I'd say. Have you seen Russia's new tank? Uh, no, <laughs> yeah. it's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, but I mean, that's, it's way more advanced than the Abrams is now. So, right. Well, that, I think the Abrams was, was designed in the late seventies, wasn't it? So yeah, it's pretty old. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, I, I, I think the history of, of how we got to the point where it was, you know the the multiple different ownerships of the company and the fact that you know, a bunch of the developers left just kind of like uh, what happened with the, uh, um, the MySQL guys left um, and the community followed them. So Firebird has got a large um, community of very dedicated people. Um, they just don't get much love, and it's quite interesting that uh, that it's now included in LibreOffice, but it's definitely a lot more um, competent and, uh, and complete in features than what you'd expect from an open source um, desktop uh, productivity package. Um, I wonder if, uh, I probably should have asked Florian if he knows any details as, how, as to how and why it was included. We ask, is, is anyone in the audience know how Interbase came to be included into, into LibreOffice. <clears throat> I guess that's a no. Could be on the uh, chat. Uh, where's the chat? Here we go. So what do you mean by included? I mean, it's, it's embedded into the document. Uh, no, it's included in uh, when you install LibreOffice. Um, the first, uh, the first thing is, um, the original, uh, inclusion was started one or two years ago or something like that. And we had many problems and bug reports about stuff not working. So currently it's back into experimental modes. So you have to explicitly uh, enable experimental features to use it because uh, okay. we thought that the migration from uh, the old database, what is it, HSQLDB, some Java database. I'm not expert in that. Um, we had problems with the migration stuff from people who wanted to migrate to Firebird from the old database and stuff was simply not working. So 
Yeah, I mean, it, and it's... I tried. Uh, I ported last month. I ported LibreOffice to Windows uh, ARM sixty four, mm -hmm. and I tried to build Firebird with it. And well, it's a cross compilation, and at least for me, after the second or third bug I encountered, which was something with uh, cross compilation, I simply dropped it currently. So. I'm not sure if uh, somebody else already has tried to build uh, Firebird with uh, Windows ARM 64. I mean, it's relatively new, so. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, 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 if there's a way to, to get out, reach out to the Firebird SQL community um, that I've never actually seen in any references to them at any of the big uh, events. Um, so it could be uh, that they might have already done it and maybe it's not shared or not shared in the right place or. Um, yeah, I, I, I just tried it for a few minutes and then I said, okay, after the second complaint yeah. from configure, I said, okay, there's so many other stuff I have to port to get it LibreOffice running on this platform. I will just skip it because currently it's experimental anyway and the whole uh, ARM 64 is an experimental build at this moment. I just yeah. was wondering what's the best way to uh, to build it because LibreOffice has like 10 or 15 patches to it and right. kind of large Windows patch. So, and I said, okay, it's too much stuff to try to figure out what's going on there and I was just wondering what's going on. And I looked at the homepage and couldn't find exactly build instructions. Maybe oh. I was, I was at least when I had a look in there, I didn't see anything just about yeah, foundation stuff and all the other stuff, but mm. software about how. And so, so currently it's yeah, back to experimental. Yeah, I don't a, know it's... if somebody uh, from the Firebird community would be interested in looking into stuff and and help uh, developing there, but yeah, it's LibreOffice and bases. Yeah, it's not well in high highly development mode in Li in LibreOffice. Because yeah, main target is uh, definitely writer and and calc. So there are not many people interested in base. Yeah, it, 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 it's it's one of those things that you try and talk to, well, you try and get uh, the calc to talk to different uh, databases. And I, a lot of times I've given up. Um, it's probably because I haven't tried hard enough. Um, but just seeing it in, included, I think is a good is a good thing. I've never got into HQ, HQ, H it's SQL DB at all um, because I was already using Firebird. So um, I'm not, I haven't done much with it. Uh, I haven't done much with Firebird for a, a long time, but I just, yeah, I think it's a positive thing because it's a very mature code base. It's, it's been around, it's, it's very, very um, compact and very, and it, it should be a lot faster than, than access. Um, as uh, Peter's just mentioned in the, in the chat. Um, yeah. So, um, especially if you wanted to run it, you could, of course, because it's a, if you, you can build it, uh, or you can, you can run the SQL, the, the Firebird SQL engine on a different server if you wanted to and have, uh, so you can build your database locally, take the file and drop it into your Firebird server and have your, have your, your users access it that way um, because that's the other thing is that access access to the database is a connection string username password connection string the connection string just specifies the database file can, so there are two can we wrap it up so that we can go to the next uh, talk sure okay um, so yeah though anyone wants to contact me about it um, I'm not necessarily an expert in it, but I've had experience in it. Uh, so, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for thanks, um, Next up will be Yoon.
if I'm saying that correct. Um, and he's going to be talking about uh, marketing of LibreOffice in Japan. Looking forward to that.